Our next presenter is Dr. Saber Haik of AURAC, and his presentation will be on Turn of Mind, Revolutionizing Practical Education, the Impact of Interactive 360, Degree Film, and Virtual Reality on Student Learning and Assessment. Dr. Saber. I'm going to use a metaphor. Uh, I'm going to actually borrow a metaphor from the area that I specialize in, uh, filmmaking. I hope you're ready for the climax. Uh, this project uh, I'm going to present today is titled Turn of Mind, and uh, it explores how we can revolutionize practical education and the impact of interactive 360 video or 180 degree video on students' learning and assessment. Uh, I was joined by two of my co-investigators, Dr. Brin from the School of Arts and Sciences and Professor Lindsay from School of Business. I hope you have seen these videos lately. These are people who are using the Apple Vision Pro. Um, not a very great thing to watch when you were all, almost worried about them, that they might trip and fall. Uh, this is the latest, uh, I can't call it VR, I can't call it AR. They are somewhere in the middle. Uh, this is a person who is just picking up a coffee. Um, and this is going to be, become very common. This space was almost dead for a few years, but now that Apple is into it, Things, things are going to change. That brings me to this whole idea of how much do you really understand what is happening in the immersive technology landscape. So I'm going to just go through some of the buzzwords so that you understand what I'm talking about and what our project is all about. Virtual reality. Virtual reality is basically a completely computer-generated environment. You wear a headset. You're completely blocked from your real world. You might trip and fall if you're not careful. So that's, that is virtual reality. It is created using 3D graphics. So it's time consuming, takes a lot of money, and it has to be done well to be seen and understood as well. So that's virtual, that is VR. 360 VR is different. 360 VR is real world, still immersive, shot with some really specialized 360 camera. That's a 360 camera. And I'm shooting now this session with the, with the 360 camera. So if I put this video on, on, on somebody's headset, they will be with us in this classroom. So it's very different from VR, which is a virtual world completely generated from a computer, from a 3D graphics point of view. This is real world. And you can still immerse people using 360 VR. 180 degree VR is just 180 degree VR. You don't get the whole, whole room. You only get 180 degree. So now you're sitting up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Augmented reality is something which is where you are experiencing, you are in the real world, and then you are bringing some 3D elements into the world. You can use a tab, you can use your phone, and I can place like a creature running around in this room. It's virtual, but I am experiencing it while I am in the real world. So that's augmented reality. This is what you saw with the Apple Vision Pro, somewhere in the middle. Either it is not augmented reality, it is not virtual reality, somewhere in the middle. Because the people who are wearing the headsets, they, they can experience the real world. At the same time, they can experience the virtual world as well. Now, often, most people would like to call the Apple Vision Pro a uh, mixed reality. They're not really happy. The reason why they're not happy is because this term was coined by Microsoft. So I don't think they're gonna, be, they're gonna be using it for their device. Everything that comes under this umbrella, augmented reality, virtual reality, you know, everything is called extended reality. That's an umbrella term used to encompass everything that you just heard. So just to give you overview of the market size, if you talk about the market size, the extended, the extended reality overall in the next five years is going to be valued at 700 and 472 billion with a growth rate of 34.94%. If we talk about the education market, if we talk about just education, we are looking at in the next, by 2026, a valuation of 13 billion. If you incorporate employee training and simulation, this is going to be valued up to 294 billion. So huge potential for education and to adopt extended, to adopt extended reality into the classrooms. 
So just to give you an understanding why we are not going towards VR, but we are going towards 360 VR. The difference is cost. In the last one year, as a school, we have met lots of vendors who can provide uh, solutions for our labs using VR. The problem is, to create VR, you have to re recreate the entire lab. If it is not done well, it doesn't look good. And no, most importantly, the time it will take to create and the money it will cost. On the other hand, if you use a 360 VR, then it's very different. You can do a quick turnaround to create a 360 VR experience, it's much cheaper, it's much faster, and it's easier to operate by everybody. It just requires a little bit of skill training, and that's about it. So we are, I mean, at least what I feel, I'm more interested in exploring 360 VR than VR. I have seen lots of projects in this country by lots of other universities where they're trying out VR. The problem is you're targeting students. This particular generation has grown up experiencing video games. They have experienced the best graphics possible. If you want to put them in a classroom created in a VR, it better be good because they're used to high-end graphics. To create a video game sort of a VR environment, it's very, very costly. So that's where I would like to put my money, which is actually using 360 VR, then VR. The first project that we worked on is called In Their Shoes, uh, thanks to Professor Lindsay. Uh, we did this project to offer business scenarios for students. Now you know that in School of Business there are lots of case studies and it's very important for the, st for the students to understand how to react in a certain situation, particularly for training leadership. If I put you in a situation, how would you react? And the best way to do that is to immerse them in the very environment itself. So we did this project, and this is how it looks like. This is, I did this recording from my VR headset. And this is the opening. The professor is actually telling you that there is going to be a scenario for you. And she's explaining the scenario for you. You can interact with different elements put. This is the scenario. I got some really trained actors for this. Uh, we have Dr. Kevin, uh, who is my boss, and I am acting as an HR manager. The, this is a first-person view. So you are in a situation where Thanks you don't know what's going to happen. Your boss calls you, and then notice. they ignore uh, you eventually, and then they tell you that you're going to make a big decision. You're not familiar with what's happening, uh, but uh, the company has faced some difficult... Uh, and then you're given a choice. Thanks for coming in on such short notice. Right? Are you getting fired? No, Are you getting promoted? Or this, like this, this, this nothing is changing, right? I told Kevin to wear a much better tie, but he wore a very friendly tie. I was like, come on, man. So, so we, have to, we have to actually create uh, an entire scenario, and uh, you have to get trained actors, and that is something that will make it real. And the whole idea is the students are actually wearing it. They're there in the classroom, they're there in the seats, and they're experiencing this entire, entire, um, entire scenario. So, the next project uh, we are doing is actually we're working with the biotech technology uh, uh, department and we're actually creating the entire process of a cell culture. So I'm working with Dr. Siju and he, and this is a, this is a linear. What you saw before was a, not a linear. It would lead you to different conclusions. This one is a linear. It better be linear because we're talking about cells here. So Dr. Siju is taking us through the entire process of how cell culture is done from point A to point B. The students, once they uh, go through this experience, we can also put assessment. After one process, we can ask them questions. So there's a whole lot of interactivity built into this entire system. To give you an overview, this is an example from a platform that we are using. It's called ThinkLink, and it's an amazing platform, very easy cloud-based platform. You shoot the 360 video, you upload it, and you can put all these tags, as you can see, Imagine you have a 360 picture of the biotechnology lab and you have different tags which relates to each equipment. That is a great way to, for students to learn about each equipment. You can click on it, you can play a video, all that is possible. Uh, so you can add a whole lot of interactivity. This is the whole process. We shoot in 360 VR uh, and then we export it to, uh, to, 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 to Adobe Premiere. In Adobe Premiere, we do, the, we do the audio syncing. After audio syncing, we do, do some color correction. After color correction, we export it and we import it on ThinkLink. In ThinkLink, we import the media, 
and then we add the interactivity according to the plan. So it's very simple, it's cloud-based, and it can be done in a very fast, efficient manner if you are uh, planned and if you have good actors. So that's basically the whole process. This is the platform you're using. In the last six months, I have actually tried three different platforms. I found this to be uh, very um, easy to use and very inexpensive. Uh, I used a system which was very expensive. I found this far better. They also have added augmented reality. This is used by historical sites, tours. Suppose you have a tour of, the, of a site, you can, add, you can add all these elements and it's really, really fast. So what we're trying to do here is that we're looking at the possibility of finding different aspects of this project. For example, we can apply it in role plays, we can apply it in problem solving scenarios, as you just saw. What are we doing next? We are actually uh, working on our next documentary, it's gonna be a 180 degree VR, and we have an opportunity here because uh, we are using this camera, it is a, it's by Canon, it's a fisheye lens, and it is a 180 degree VR camera, so we're working on our next documentary to be shot in 180-degree VR. So, in conclusion, this opens up a great opportunity for everybody, and we are not only embracing the technology, we are also making sure that we go along with the pedagogy and make sure that we make a big difference to the student experience. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Saber.